श्री दिलीप चौहान डायरेक्टर जनरल फिकी इज एक्सलेंसी जॉर्ज कैसेनिडा एम्बेसडर ऑफ पेरू श्री सतीश पाय एम डी इंदालको एंड चेयरमैन नॉन फेरस कमिटी श्री एस के रोमटा नॉन एग्जीक्यूटिव चेयरमैन बालको एंड मेंटर ऑफ द कमिटी श्री डी के सिन्हा आई जी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड फॉरेस्ट क्लाइमेट चेंज डिस्टिंग्विश डेलीगेट्स अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल वी आर टॉकिंग ऑफ नॉन फेरस मेटल्स एंड माइनिंग सेक्टर विच ऑब्वियसली प्रोड्यूसर्स द मिनरल्स फॉर ट्वेंटी थर्टी some of my previous speakers have laid down the status of these industries suffice to say that we are a very large consumer of non ferrous minerals and metals but if you look at the per capita consumption in the case of aluminium we are about 1/4 the world average in the case of copper we are around 1/8 of the chinese average and so on so forth so with the economy growing at 6 and a half plus this year and 7 to 7 and a half next year growth and in the medium term growth in this sector is inevitable there are certain challenges especially in the aluminium and copper sector where we have a large installed capacity and though there has been growth of about 5.4% in aluminium and 7% in copper the capacities have outstripped the domestic requirements and we are in fact exporting of course this has also been due to imports on i was talking of basically virgin metal but there is also a large import of scrap which is recycled and pushed into the domestic industry scrap obviously is a cheap source but going forward there will be more quality consciousness and more delineation and standardization for scrap and that i think is something which the scrap recyclers have to address going forward on the issue of the basis or the basics of these industries i will address aluminum and copper in the case of aluminum we are well endowed with bauxite reserves i am aware some industries are starved of materials but with a more transparent auction process in place and the issue of price fixation <coughs> likely to be resolved in the next month or so about 10 aluminum 10 bauxite blocks would be coming up for auction in the month of march and april uh, in this calendar year on copper our domestic production is only about 4% of our requirements of our domestic requirements there as well there will be blocks coming up for auction and though for a long time 
certainly will be dependent on foreign sources of copper concentrate. We would go on increasing our ability to mine our own ore. We in the Ministry of Mines have taken a conscious decision to shift more and more towards deep-seated minerals and non-ferrous minerals in particular. So if one looks at the exploration programs which were approved on the 16th of February this year, you would find a distinct shift towards non-ferrous and deep-seated minerals. Because we realize that this is the area which has very high potential and a very high requirement and a strategic requirement for India's growth going forward. It was mentioned that FTAs have to an extent affected industry. I assure you that we will interact with industry in the best possible manner, which we have, at least to my personal knowledge, been doing in the last few years. I am sure even before that it was so. And we would see that FTAs do not disadvantage the Indian industry and its growth. Just a small comment on uh, the issues about forest clearances and so on and so forth. We are very happy to see that Mr. Sinha has been most forthcoming and of late the Ministry of Environment and Forest has been quite proactive. We have submitted to them certain detailed proposals on specially uh, prospecting which he seems to be in sync because the prospecting requirements as per evidence of mineral rules do not today gel with the permissions available under the Forest Act to the extent Board rules are required per square kilometers. We have sent a very specific proposal and we hope that the Ministry of Forest and Environments, uh, Environment shall act upon that so that exploration at least is not hampered by certain regulations in force today. We believe in talking to industry and with your cooperation and with your inputs, we have been able to bring in an amendment of option rules. And I'm very happy to share that in this financial year, in the first eight months, we have put up 28 blocks for auction. In the three months, that is December, January, February, post the amendment, 41 blocks have come on auction. So we have the figure of 28 for 8 months and 41 for 3 months post amendment. And I thank the industry for the suggestions, the state governments and my officers who worked on this amendment so that the auctioning of blocks has been substantially speeded up. It is not that we have reached the ideal. More glitches would occur. It's a dynamic situation. And we would look forward for further suggestions which can come in to make this process more pragmatic and more easy. I think I have uh, more or less said what I had thought or putting forth to you, I'll be anxious and waiting for your question answers because it is in questioning that one gains real insight and is able to render certain clarifications. I would thank Fiki.
for calling me over here today to share my views with you, to share your insights with us to take this sector forward. Thank you very much.